next is chapter basics of radar and optical fiber and in which we are taking the first question from the chapter radar or you can say the topic radar in pulse radar the peak radar transmitter power is increased by a factor of 81 keeping all other parameters unchanged the maximum range capability of the radar increased by a factor of so here uh, we have to calculate the range maximum range capability is increasing by a factor when we are increasing the power by 81 times transmitted power 81 times so you can uh, write equation in general so we know that if we want to calculate the received power we calculate it by the transmitted power this transmitted power is multiplied with gain of antenna then the power density which is 4 pi r square then we multiply it with the radar cross section uh, area of the radar cross section so radar cross section area of the target in fact right then we divide again by 4 pi r square okay and then when we receive we multiply it with the effective aperture area so this is the derivation that we have done so now this range this r is the range and we are increasing the transmitted power and keeping all the other parameters constant so keeping all other parameters constant keeping all other parameters constant we can write that r to the power 4 is proportional to the transmitted power or this r is proportional to the transmitted power to the power 1 by 4 you can write like this so we are changing the transmitted power so that's why we can write if i take the ratio r1 by r2 is equal to pt1 divided by pt2 whole to the power 1 by 4 this we can write so the range uh, is increasing by a factor of that we have to calculate so let us say this previously the r is the range is r1 and the second time we have to calculate this r2 is pt1 is previously suppose pt and we are increasing by a factor of 81 pt and this is 1 by 4 so this is 1 by 3 r1 by r2 and hence the r2 is the range is increased by a factor of 3 the range is increased by a factor of 3 so according to the option the correct answer would be option d so this is the simplest question uh, in the chapter radar we are having very simple questions so this is how we calculate the range if we increase or decrease by any uh, any value then how can you relate the range so the derivation you don't need to remember you can easily derive directly and the thing which you have to remember is that this formula is based on the gain and the effective aperture area and uh, if we are talking about the gain only so then effective aperture area is also related to the gain and uh, if we are talking about the only the effective aperture area then gain can, should be replaced in terms of effective aperture area now next is question number two a radar transmitter has a pulse repetition frequency of 1500 pulse per second and pulse width of 1 microsecond its duty cycle is see so here it is given that the pulse repetition frequency is 1500 pulse per second pps means pulse per second this is the unit of this prf which we represent in radar and the pulse width pulse width is given as 1 microsecond okay now we have to find the duty cycle so the duty cycle is defined as t on divided by t off t on divided by t on plus t off okay so t on plus t off is nothing but the pulse repetition time and t on is the pulse width this is the pulse repetition time pulse repetition interval and pulse repetition interval inverse of this pulse repetition time or pulse repetition duration is nothing but pulse repetition frequency so the inverse of it is pulse 
repetition frequency. So pulse width was given as 1 microsecond and pulse repetition is 1500. So we will get 0 0.0015. Zero point zero zero one five, which is option C. So the correct answer would be option C. See, I didn't remember any formula. I am deriving right now, right here, and writing the equation according to this, and then substituting the values, and I am getting the answer. Now we are having the next question, question number three. What is the greatest allowable pulse repetition frequency for the unambiguous reception in a radar having a maximum range of 120 km? So maximum unambiguous range because it is talking about the unambiguous range. So it is given as C upon 2, CT by 2 in fact, right? CT upon 2 we write and because we are talking about the maximum unambiguous range, so maximum unambiguous range is depending on the pulse repetition frequency. So we can write 2 into pulse repetition frequency. With the pulse repetition frequency, before the pulse repetition time, if we transmit the signal, we will be having a ambiguity. And if we are transmitting a pulse after pulse repetition time, then that range is without an ambiguous range. And it is saying that this range is without an ambiguous. That means this 120 kilometer is without an ambiguous. That means that corresponding frequency should be pulse repetition frequency. And we have to find this pulse repetition frequency only. So this is the 120 kilometers. So 120 into 10 to the power 3 is equal to C, which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 2 into pulse repetition frequency. So it is pulse repetition frequency equal to 240 and divided by actually this is 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 120 into 2 into 10 to the power 3. So this is 10 to the power 4. So this is 3 into 10 to the power 4 divided by 24. One two five zero. So 1 to 5 0 PPS pulse per second will be the unit and according to the option correct answer would be option A. Now next is Question number four. The maximum range of a monostatic radar is R. If a target having a radar cross section of 10 meter square at distance R by 2, what should be the target cross section at distance 3 R by 2 in an equal signal strength at the radar? So here we are saying that the at the distance r by 2 that means uh, if we write the formula again then the receive power is pt into 4 pi r square into g into sigma upon 4 pi r square into effective aperture area. Here we are saying that the radar cross section is that means sigma is at distance r by 2 that means here again r to the power 4 is proportional to sigma and other parameters are constant signal strength is constant so we have to use this relation that means r1 by r2 whole to the power 4 is equal to sigma 1 upon sigma 2 so at distance r by 2 the sigma 1 is 10 and we have to calculate this sigma 2 at distance 3 r by 2 whole to the power 4 this r by 2 and r by 2 will get cancelled and we get 1 upon 81 is equal to 10 upon sigma 2. Hence, we can say that this radar cross section will be 3 at distance 3 r by 2 is 810 meter square area. So, according to the option, the correct answer is option C. So, this is question number 4. So, you can see that the questions are only less than one minute question. So if you are having good practice, you can solve it very fastly, even without remembering the formula of this radar range equation. Question number five, in a radar system, if the peak transmitted power is increased by a factor of 16, the antenna diameter is increased by a factor of two, then the maximum range will increase by a factor of. So here we are, changing the two parameters 
first is the radar transmitted power and second one is the diameter is also increased now because we are talking about the diameter that means effective aperture area should be coming into the picture because area is pi d square by 4 or pi r square that means we are talking about the diameter so that means we have to represent this equation in terms of area only so this effective aperture area can be related with the gain also so this ae is equal to 4 pi lambda square upon 4 pi into gain so this gain is written as ae so this gain is also proportional to ae so now we can say that because we are changing the transmitted power and effective aperture area so if i replace this gain with 4 pi into ae then what would be the received power so this received power will be pt upon 4 pi r square and gain is replaced by 4 pi into ae upon lambda square into sigma upon 4 pi r square into ae so i am not cancelling anything we are talking about the effective aperture area so we are having effective aperture area we are talking about the transmitted power we want to calculate the range so that means we can write this r to the power 4 is proportional to pt into ae square can we write like this so if we can write like this then what will be the change in the ratio uh, range so this effective aperture area we can also write as r to the power 4 is directly proportional to pt this ae you can write separately here this is pi d square by 4 isn't it in terms of diameter or you can write in terms of radius also so if you are writing in the terms of diameter so you can see that the effective aperture area is directly proportional to square of diameter so that means it would be power 4 of the diameter power 4 of the diameter because when you square it you will get the d to the power 4 so this we are getting okay now we are having r1 by r2 whole to the power 4 is equal to pt into d1 pt1 into d1 and pt2 into d2 whole to the power uh, not whole to the power pt1 divided by pt2 and d1 upon d2 whole to the power 4 okay so the range previously was uh, we don't know but how much we by factor we have to calculate and the power is increased by a factor of 16 so power previously was pt suppose and then in the second times we are increasing by a factor of 16 so this is 16 times of previous power and the diameter is increased by a factor of 2 so if it is d and it is increased by a factor of 2 so we get like this okay so this pt and pt will get cancelled this d and d will get cancelled and we get 1 upon 16 here and again 1 upon 16 here and this r1 by r2 is equal to 1 upon 2 to the power 8 whole to the power 1 by 4 or you can say that this r2 is equal to this r2 is equal to this is 1 by 4 right so this power will be in 1 by 4 that means it will become 2 so it is 4 times r1 so the range should be increased by a factor of 4 that is the answer should be option c so the correct answer is option c here right so this is the way you can solve the questions I hope you don't are uh, you don't have any doubt in this so this 2 to the power 4 2 to the power 4 and the power is 1 by 4 if you cancel it 2 to the power 2 you will get if you will cross multiply it you will get 4 times r1 so the range has been increased by a factor of 4 so by changing the transmitted power and the diameter of the antenna you can increase the range so next will be the question number 6 So you can read that question, question number 6. As you can see that without any uh, demanding any formula, I am just deriving it and solving it. So there is no need of uh, remembering the formula of the 
ट्रांसमिटेड पावर और अडा रेंज इक्वेशन दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट बट यू कैन इजली डिराइव इन वन सेकेंड दैट इज वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन यू कैन डिराइव नाउ वी आर हैविंग क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स If the range of a radar is double, the peak transmitted power of the radar has to be. So, peak transmitted power is proportional to r to the power four that we have derived now. We can directly write it. So, p t one divided by p t two is equal to r one divided by r two to the power four. so we are saying that the range is to be double so pt1 divided by pt2 the range was previously r and we are doubling it that is we are making it two times of r so this the transmitted power will be this is 16 times of pt1 so the transmitted power will be increased by factor of 16 or if we want to increase the range double then we have to increase the transmitted power by factor 16 so the correct answer would be option d for this question now we are having the question number 7 in a monostatic radar if the antenna aperture is double then the range will be if i am doubling the range uh, sorry effective aperture area antenna aperture is double that means area so just now we wrote this that the receive power is pt upon 4 pi r square into gain and that gain is replaced by 4 pi into effective aperture area divided by lambda square into sigma upon 4 pi r square into ae so from here we can write that this we are talking about the range so r to the power 4 is directly proportional to a e square so r1 divided by r2 is equal to a e1 divided by a e2 whole square and divided whole to the power 4 so we can write r1 by r2 is equal to a e1 divided by a e2 to the power 1 by 2 that is very simple this is a square if i divide it by 4 i will get 1 by 2 okay now we are doubling the effective aperture area so previously it was ae now we are doubling it so two times of ae 1 by root 1 by 2 and the range what would be the range now so now we can see that from here this range this ae and ae will get cancel this will be root 2 so this r2 will be root 2 times of r1 so the range will be increased by a factor of root 2 so option d is there if it comes into the denominator then we say that it is reduced by a factor of root 2 but is it, it is increasing by the factor of root 2 because it is in multiplication now we are having the next question question number 8 if the average power of radar transmitter if the average power of the radar transmitter is 2 kw and the peak power of the transmitter is 1000 kw what will be the duty cycle so here it is given that average power average power is 2 kw and peak power is 1000 kilowatt 1000 kilowatt then the duty cycle is so the duty cycle is given by average power to the peak power the duty cycle we have written already it is the ratio of average power to peak power so average power is 2 kilowatt so 2 into 10 power 3 and the peak power is 1000 kilowatt so 1000 into 10 power 3 it means this test power 3 and test power 3 will get cancelled so 0.002 will get so according to option the correct answer would be option a 0.002 so you have to be careful while selecting the option because there are two option in which 0.002 and 0.02 is given so sometimes we did the mistake in hurry that uh, we select the wrong answer 
wrong option because both are very much similar. So you have to be careful while uh, marking the option. Uh, you have to be uh, carefully observe each option and then you have to mark it. Now we are having the question number 9 as well. So in question number 9, match list 1 that is the designation of a radar frequency and list 2 with the frequency range and select the correct answer. So we are having a four different band and their frequency is given. So I told you what is the range of the frequency with the band. So let's write once again. So we are having the band L, S, C, X, K, U, K, K, A. These are the band designation and its range is 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12, 12 to 18, 18 to 27 and 27 to 40. This is the range. So and all are in gigahertz. Okay. This is the band name and all are in gigahertz. So we can select it. So S is having a range 2 to 4. That, that is A is matched with 2. X is having band 8 to 12.4 that is B to 3. And uh, then KU, KU is 12 to 18, so it is 4, so C is having 4 and D is K, so it should be 1, right, 18 to 26.5, approximately 27. So 2, 3, 4, 1 should be the correct answer, 2, 3, 4, 1 is the correct answer and that is option C. So now next is question number 10. Now please read the question, question number 10. A radar operating at 5 gigahertz uses a common antenna for transmitting and recep reception. Transmission and reception, we are using the same antenna. The antenna has a gain of 150 and is aligned for a maximum directional radiation and the reception to a target which is 1 kilometer away from having a radar cross section of 300, 3 meter square. If it transmit a 100 kilowatt, then the received power is. So, if we say the formula, if we write the formula of the power received because we want to calculate the received power, right? So, we want to calculate the received power. So, this received power we can write easily the formula. This is the PT multiplied with gain then the power density 4 pi r square then it should be multiplied with the radar cross section area of the target and uh, this is again divided by 4 pi r square and then effective aperture area so this is the formula now we in the question it is not given about the effective aperture area of the radar so that's why we have to replace this and we know the relation between the effective aperture area and the gain which is lambda square by 4 pi into gain because the gain of the antenna is given and the, for the transmission and the reception we are using the same antenna that means this is the effective aperture area of the receiving antenna this is the gain of the transmitting antenna but both are same so that's why this effective aperture area we can relate by this formula and this would be pr is equal to pt into g divided by 4 pi r square into sigma upon 4 pi r square and this ae will be replaced by this lambda square upon 4 pi into g now we get pt and 4 pi r square to the whole square and g square and sigma lambda is equal to c upon f whole square and what we are left this 4 pi again okay so we can write it as 4 pi to the power 3 and r to the power 4. Okay, can you write like this? You can see that this pt, this 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi cube, r to the power 4 in the denominator, sigma into g square in the numerator, lambda is c upon f whole square. Now we are having all the values. Let's substitute all the different values which is given. So this transmitted power is 100 kilowatt. So 100 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 4 pi whole cube 
r to the power 4 range is 1 kilometer so 10 to the power 3 to the power 4 okay gain is 150 so this is 150 whole square sigma is radar cross section which is 3 c upon f that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 the frequency is 5 gigahertz so 5 into 10 to the power 9 whole square now we have to calculate this effective aperture area we have considered okay radar cross section area we have considered radar cross section of the target it is 3 now we have to solve this this is 100 or 10 to the power 5 i can write directly into 150 square in the numerator we are writing into 3 and if i solve this this is 1 so 3 by 50 whole square okay so And we want to calculate in terms of just I'm making something. Yes, one more three is there. Okay. In nanowatt, we have to find in microwatt, in fact. So in microwatt, it should be in microwatt, it is. 0 0.0122 micro watt we want to calculate in micro watt so this is the receive power 0 0.012 as given in the answer table also we can see that 0 0.012 so up to three decimal if i want to write then it is 0 0.012 so this is the question based on the radar so this chapter is based on the radar and optical fiber so next we will so uh, we will study the some part or theoretical part of this optical fiber and then we will solve the related questions.